Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about SAP DME or Data Medium Exchange. This is also found in T code DMEE if you guys are familiar with it. So this video will focus on the process, so the end-to-end -end process of DME. And towards the end of the video, I will be doing a quick run-through on how to test your DME changes. Now this one is going to focus on the process, how things work, and not necessarily on the configurations. I find that I'm able to really grasp the topic if I understand the process, how it works before even knowing the configurations. For this one, we're going to focus on understanding it and knowing the process, including the testing. I want you guys to know that I will be using my blog post as a teaching aid for you guys. Um, it's really in-depth and I highly suggest that you read through it because I want this video to be as quick as possible. Uh, I understand that there are some people with, you know, uh, a lot of, of tasks and they need to understand this quickly. So we'll try to do this really smoothly and the quickest way possible. I'm going to link the blog post down below. It looks like this. This is the post title. Let me just zoom in. So we're going to dive right into the process flow. Zoom you in more. So this one, we're going to start off by doing an SAP payment run using T-code F110. So number one, we do T-code F110 for the payment run. Now this is considering, of course, that you have vendor items for payment. If you don't, then there should be existing accounting documents for you to reference and see what is due for payment. Next up, with the payment run through F110, there's going to be an output. So the payment run will generate a payment medium output. In our example, we're going to talk about the output as a .xml file. Then the next step would be there's going to be an online banking system or depending on the interface or the system architecture that was set up, the .xml file will be or brought over to the bank. Next, Assuming that the bank is able to consume the XML file, there are no errors whatsoever, and it is able to understand the content of whatever was done in our SAP payment run, the bank sends an electronic bank statement, or EBS. Now, since uh, I'm using Belgium as an example, they use the format dot cod or coda files what does it look like i have a sample right here there we go it looks something like this i have a separate post on this so i'll just link it down below if you're interested anyway they send a dot coda file with the payment details and once that is done we need to upload the EBS to SAP. Once we upload the EBS to SAP, again, given that this is utilizing a Belgian example and they have their own transaction code, dedicated transaction code for that one, it's FEBC. We use that. The, the program counterpart is over here, right below the T code. And next, Assuming that SAP is able to consume the electronic bank statement, all the necessary configurations are there in place, and you know everything else is set up accurately, then we can go to transaction code FEBAN to view the FEBC results. Now this is where you do some post 
processing of bank statements. You can clearly see the data that you uploaded to SAP. Now, some additional information. If you have an interpretation algorithm set up, it's going to perform automatic clearing. One high-level example is that if during the payment run, we sent over some sort of reference to the payment run, it is included in the XML file and it is brought over to the bank. That means the electronic bank statement would have the reference back. If the reference is contained in the electronic bank statement, we upload it and assuming that the interpretation algorithm configuration or setup is in place if it finds this reference and these two are equal then there will be such a thing as an auto clearing because at the end of the day when we view feban and it has a green color that means that there is a posted document and it is cleared. So this is the purpose of interpretation algorithm if you are uh, wondering. Then let's move on to the testing. But before that, this is the summary of the process. And one key thing to take note of here is the XML file. Why am I putting so much emphasis on the XML file? It's because the payment medium output, generated payment medium output from F110 is your DME. I mentioned that DME output is equivalent to your payment medium output. So if you're doing some sort of testing, you want to validate the output of, of your changes, then you need to perform an F110 testing. Moving on to the actual testing, I just want to add that if you go to transaction code DMEE, there is a button there that's called test active version. It's this one over here. Let me zoom in. It's the one over here. And if you click that, assuming that you enter your, your tree type, the format tree as well, and you click on the test active version, it's going to to provide you with an XML overview of how the DME is structured. Personally, this is not enough. This is not a guarantee that your XML file will be completely accurate. The best thing to do is always, always do the F110 and double check on the payment run and the payment medium output, okay? Because that is where the realistic data is, is shown, especially if you have some, some configurations in the DME that need to pull some data from the payment run. So you're not really going to see that unless you do a payment run. This is a detailed testing proper. So number one, just back this out for the testing number one you do an FB01 or you can reuse some accounting documents that are due for payment so definitely we need to have documents that are due for payment next assuming we created the document we go to F110 to do a payment run so this is pretty standard. Make sure that you tick the payment medium checkbox if you're finally doing the, the payment run. Uh, definitely if you're doing the payment run, please make sure to tick the create payment medium checkbox. This is going to be the basis of your testing for the DME changes. Okay, so once you do your or complete the payment run, it's going to be green, assuming everything is okay. 
we have the posting orders ready so if you created two documents or if there are two documents due for payment then it's going to pull to it really depends on the parameters but you get the gist next you can go to transaction codes al11 to check on the file output so in our example it is an xml file now if you don't know where the file is supposedly stored or saved you can always go to f110 and then view the job logs so in this one in this example let me zoom in further it says that the payment media was created in our dme format and the file name is here highlighted in purple i did some masking so that it's sort of confidential but you get the gist where the details are seen so that's that you can follow the location or the file location and do a download now this is technically the end if you downloaded or did your checking of the xml file then you're good to go because it's sort of visual and everything but if you want to finish the end-to-end -end process you can continue with the further steps below but for this one please keep in mind that is that it is always best to do some comparison before and after comparison of the files but definitely it really helps to be sure with your testing by doing all of these steps now for the end-to-end -end testing again you can um, get a sample.cod file maybe change it or tweak it a bit so it matches your payment run details and you can do the febc and the feban checking the summary is here down below and there are additional information or tips for you for example some extra steps if you really want to be sure so on and so forth now this one is a dme end-to-end -end process blog post but if you're interested i do have another dme article on this one this is my this is my website or my blog and the other dme post is over here so this one is more on changing the dme tree and generating the sap dme tree file so we have the before the change proper and the post change testing and if you're interested to know more about electronic bank statements i do have a free electronic bank statement learning kit for you guys it contains the pdf compilation of my blog posts that deal with bank accounting electronic bank statements the links are there with additional info there are screenshots steps step-by-step -step guides troubleshooting interpretation and analysis you get the the overview and then i do have a sample dot cod file for your reference it's the one that i showed you a while ago and you can manipulate the the data there such that it meets the the master data and payment details that you're testing so you can manipulate the file and do the end-to-end -end testing as mentioned so that's it for this video i hope you guys learned something from this and if you have some questions feel free to comment down below i'll see you in the next one